When using a radio transmitter for CB, amateur radio or for professional use, people strive to get the very best SWR in the antenna feeder, but it's not always possible to get the perfect one-to-one SWR reading. So what are the issues with having a high level of SWR and what is it really necessary to do? Before looking at the issues of having a high level of SWR, let's first take a quick look at what SWR actually is. To gain the maximum power transfer from a feeder to a load such as an antenna, the load should have the same impedance as the feeder. If there's any mismatch, power is reflected back along the feeder. The voltage and current for the power travelling in the forward direction sum with the voltage and current for the power travelling in the reverse direction and set up standing waves along the feeder. For small values of standing waves, the standing wave pattern is almost sinusoidal whereas for large values like a short or an open circuit, the pattern appears like a series of half waveforms joined together. The combined voltage falls to zero and rises to a maximum of twice that of the voltage from the forward-only power. A similar occurrence happens for the current, but the patterns are not in the same phase as we see here. So what are the actual issues with having a high VSWR? First of all, damage can be caused to the transmitter output stage. Another issue can be a reduction in output power. It's also just possible that the feeder could be damaged. And loss of signal. This is possibly the main issue that most people think about. First, the possible damage to the transmitter output power amplifier. This is actually quite a real danger if there's no protection in the PA, because semiconductors are very reliable if they're operated within their limits, but can easily be damaged by overvoltage and current. With the high voltages and currents that are generated by the high levels of standing wave, it's easy to exceed the limits and blow the transistors, as many have found to their cost. One way of overcoming the possibility of damaging the output transistors is to sense the VSWR and reduce the power accordingly. Many transmitters have this capability and it saves the output devices. But it does mean that the power level is reduced as the VSWR increases, so it's best that the transmitter sees a good VSWR level. This can be achieved by ensuring the antenna itself matches the feeder or by using an antenna matching unit. This is best right at the antenna feed point, but normally it is much more convenient to place one by the transmitter. In some circumstances, it's necessary for some amplifiers to be operated with high levels of SWR, and they need to be designed to tolerate this. It will mean that they need to operate well within their limits so that they can withstand the voltage, current and power levels encountered when the SWR levels are high. The high voltages and currents in the feeder could also conceivably damage the feeder if high levels of power are being used. The voltage and current levels rise to twice the value of the perfectly matched case and it could be that current hotspots occur or the high voltages could cause breakdown. Although if good quality coax is used and it's operated well within its specification limits, then this is unlikely to happen. But one of the main issues people tend to worry about is the loss in level of the transmitted signal as a result of the VSWR. Let's look at what happens. The power is transmitted towards the antenna, but it'll suffer some loss in the feeder. When it reaches the antenna, some power is reflected. This power is also subject to the feeder loss. When it reaches the transmitter matching, it can then be reflected back along the feeder again, travelling towards the antenna, repeating the process. But after each reflection, it'll be attenuated. So if no power was lost in the feeder, it would all have to be transmitted. But any power lost in the feeder cannot be. If the loss in the feeder is very low, as in the case of open wire feeder, virtually no loss results from the poor VSWR. This is why open wire feeder can be used with a non-resonant antenna which has very high levels of standing waves in the feeder. But using coaxial cable, greater levels of loss are introduced. There are a few points to follow to ensure the best operation for a traditional radio transmitting station such as an amateur radio station or a professional mobile radio communication system and the like. First, try to get the best match between any coaxial feeder and the antenna system as this will ensure that the maximum amount of power is transferred 
and the minimum level is reflected back along the coax feeder with all the resultant losses that may entail. Next, use an antenna tuner at the output of the transmitter. This though is more applicable for HF radio stations. The antenna tuner will ensure that the transmitter sees the best impedance match and that the PA isn't subject to high levels of SWR. By doing this, it can prevent possible damage to the PA output devices or the reduction in power level when the protection circuitry starts to act. The maximum level of SWR that many transmitters are specified to tolerate is 3 to 1, so keep well below this by using an ATU or improving the matching at the antenna itself. Keeping the SWR below a maximum of 2 to 1, or preferably lower, is a much better aiming point. But once the transmitter's happy, there's little benefit in getting the SWR down from, say, 1.3 to 1 to 1.1 to 1, so don't worry too much about those last little improvements. Then don't totally rely on the PA protection, as it is meant to be a last-ditch circuit. Most of these circuits work very well, but occasionally small time delays can mean that it doesn't kick in quite fast enough, and damage may still result. It's not worth taking the risk, and it's always best to sort any known problems first. Finally, the use of high-quality coaxial feeder is always a good idea, as it will reduce the losses in the feeder, and it'll mean that more of the transmitter power reaches the antenna. Although it will mean that the SWR level seen by the transmitter for any mismatch at the antenna will be higher, but that will be the subject of another video. But the SWR seen by the transmitter can be reduced by using an ATU, as we heard earlier. So there we have it. A few simple guidelines to ensure that high levels of SWR do not have a negative impact on a transmitting station. For more information, head over to the video description for more details and some useful links. Also, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like the video.